Hello there, my name is Pine Wu, and today I'm here talking about evolving Vita Ruiz view. Uh, my name is Pine, and I go by at Octoref on both GitHub and Twitter. So I'm the creator of Vita and uh, part of the Vue.js core team. I used to be working on Visual Studio Code at Microsoft, but since then I have left to live as a digital nomad and uh, I'm splitting my time between conducting independent research and the contributing to open source. I keep a blog at blog.batsu.io and uh, here's the link where you can find more about me. So for those of you who don't know what Viter is, Viter is view tooling for VS Code and uh, there's a link to the GitHub repository um, Viter started as an editor extension for VS Code and it's one of the most popular one with 5.8 million downloads so far and uh, it has 4.7k stars on GitHub. Although Viter started as a view tooling only for VS Code, but because Viter implements something called language server protocol, the core logic of Viter can be easily reused by other editors that's compatible with language server protocol, such as Atom, Sublime, Vim, NeoVim, Emacs, and Code Sandbox. So using one of those editors, you can give Viter a try. So those are an uh, overview of Viter, but let's take a closer look at what Viter actually does for you. In 2016, I was learning Vue.js and the OD editor support I can find for Vue was syntax highlighting. There were a few other extensions, but they are of varying degrees of quality and uh, some of them don't even work. So when I created Viter, I want something that offers these four core functionalities for most of the languages that Vue supports. Syntax highlighting, snippet, image, language features. And uh, I want Viter to be a kind of out of the box experience for Vue developers. Let me explain a little bit about language features. Um, language features, I use this term to describe all the features that's implemented through language server protocol, such as auto completion, diagnostic errors, hover information. So, Basically, those are dynamic features that's powered by a language server. And in the context of Viter, it's the Vue language server. So Vue language server offers its functionalities through ISP. And uh, I use uh, language features word, phrase, as a, an umbrella phrase um, to describe all these features. So Viter tries to offer these uh, four core functionalities for all those languages. But for language features, um, Viter only offers language features for HTML, CSS, SAS, less, whole CSS, JavaScript, and TypeScript. That's because they already have libraries that uh, implements the language features for them. So I only need to integrate them together. For Pub and SAS, I know they're super popular. And uh, one day, if I do have time, I want to offer better editor support. But those require writing a language server from scratch, which I don't have enough time for right now. So those features before they're taken from a slide that uh, of a talk I have given in 2017. In the past three years, I think a lot of new exciting things has happened. So let's take a look at some of the new features and see how they can um, speed up your Vue.js development workflow. The first one is really simple called custom block syntax highlight. Um, in your view single file components, you can write custom blocks such as docs and uh, IATN for internationalization. For those custom blocks, you can give them any 
language that you want. Um, so Vitter supports next highlighting those custom, custom blocks by giving you a setting where you can map the custom blocks against a specific language. And after you run a command, Vitter will regenerate the text map grammar to support those um, custom blocks. As far as I know, Vitter is the only editor extension that does this. Um, so that's actually a super cool um, functionality. The next one is customize both scaffold snippets. So what this does is uh, it builds on top of VS Code snippet system to offer you something that's more useful to a Vue.js developer. Because for VS Code snippets, you need to write everything in a JSON format, which isn't really easily readable, and you have to escape a lot in a um, JSON format. What I really want is that I want to be able to write my snippet in a Vue single file component, and then later when I use it, just give me back the whole Vue um, single file component. So what I did was combining the Vue single file component format together with TextMate snippets syntax. Here I'm describing that the dollar sign one, dollar sign one describes the first cursor stop that I should stop at when I complete the whole snippet. So that's just um, remixing the TextMate snippet grammar with the Vue single file components. So there are three sources of um, customizable scaffold snippets where you can customize it. The Vita ones, they're bundled, they're not really customizable, but you can put a few snippets in your workspace, commit them with your Git repository to share them with your coworkers. Or if you have um, accumulated a bunch of snippets that you would like to reuse across different projects, then you can put those snippets into your user library, then um, those snippets will be available to all the projects you're working on in your computer. So here is a um, screenshot of a scaffold snippet completion. So it improves this it improves over the VS Code snippet system by giving you recognizable icon to the left. By reading the icon, you can know oh, whether I'm completing a whole view component or whether I'm completing a HTML template. Um, on the right side, it tells you about the source. So for example, the um, suitcase one tells you all oh, those that are coming from the workspace. And then the notepad one tells you, oh, it comes from my user setting. Uh, when I implemented this feature, I decided to follow convention over configuration. So here is how you would um, put your snippets. For example, your style related snippets should go under style. Your view whole file snippets should go onto the top level folder. So if you organize everything in this way, and uh, Vitor will offer you a very nice completion when you are trying to complete a uh, snippet. So I hope you would find this useful. Finally, with the settings scaffold snippet sources, you can turn on or off a specific um, source of snippets. For example, you only want workspace snippets, but not the one bundled with Vitor, not the ones um, on your computer, then you can turn them off. So with those aside, I want to talk a little bit about the um, improved TypeScript integration that I have spent the past two years on. So every three months, TypeScript will release a new uh, version with a bunch of improvements. They are usually either language features such as optional chaining, knowledge coalescing, or editor features such as organize import or update import pass on file move. Uh, some people think, oh, because Vitor is based on TypeScript language server, then it's very easy for Vitor to take those features and apply them to view files. The truth is, Vitor has to do a lot of custom integration to make these features work on view files. 
it's kind of challenging to bring all those features to view files because first, TypeScript does not really implement a language server protocol. Um, so for some of the features, it requires a lot of manual code to make sure they work correctly. Second, if you integrate TypeScript incorrectly, it can cause a lot of performance issues. Um, so we had to be really careful about the TypeScript integration code that I'm, uh, we are writing. Um, lastly, for some of the features such as rename, semantic highlighting, they do not really apply to view directly. So for example, renaming a function name in JavaScript file might replace all the occurrence of that function name in a JavaScript project. But what about renaming a view property? Uh, that would need to update both the script part and also the view template part because that's where you're using the prop. Uh, so those require more thinking and uh, we need to adapt the original feature to work in a view context. So last year I did some groundwork to make sure Vitor works with any version of TypeScript and uh, it has integration covering all versions of TypeScript and VS Code. And uh, I did a bunch of performance monitoring and tuning. So now as a result, Peter can run with any version of TypeScript and uh, uh, we can integrate most of the TypeScript features into Peter very easily. And uh, the performance has improved a lot. So please give it a try. Uh, some of the recent language features we have done are um, better completion by analyzing the deprecated and optional properties and giving visual hints about them, uh, improved code actions, uh, semantic folding, we used to only have indentation-based folding, and uh, many others. So if you want to know them all, please check out our change log. Some features are quite popular. Um, we know people are looking for them, so me and other contributors were working on them as we are talking. So some of them are monorepo support, they're happening. And uh, we need to do more perf tuning and uh, that's also a uh, work in progress. Um, Rahul, which is a member of Vue.js core team as well, he is doing something called Vue DX. And uh, that's a TypeScript plugin, which is able to offer some language features that Vitor is unable to do. So we are really looking forward to uh, working with Rahul to see if we can bring those two extensions together, UDX and Vitor, that we can offer one single tool that works for most of the um, Vue.js developers. Resource aside, I would like to talk a little bit about template interpolation support and the Vitor terminal interface, which I think are two of the most awesome new features. Template interpolation support, in short, gives you um, JavaScript and TypeScript support for the JavaScript and TypeScript you write in view templates. So far, what we have are completion, hover, diagnostic errors, definition, and the reference. So for example, now if you look at the right side, you see hover shows some information and the completion shows you all the properties in user and uh, you are seeing an arrow because user.2 is not a property of user. One of the recent addition we have made to template interpolation support is cross file template type checking. So with this feature, it's possible for Peter to analyze your child components prop type and see if you're giving it the correct um, data type. So for example, user is a string of time um, or event, but here we're passing to it a different string called Ben, or passing to it a, um, a computed property called age, and age is a number. So in both cases, they do not um, satisfy the prop constraint. So Peter is showing you an error. So here's a closer look to the left side. User is declared as a string and they must be either pine or event. And on the right side is the wrong usage. 
and the VS Code will, will show error marking both on incorrect usage. Uh, also, if you have de declared a prop as required and uh, no, you're using it without supplying those props, it will um, give you an error as well. I wouldn't go into too much detail about this feature. Uh, it's quite complex, but if you're interested, take a look at this blog post I have written about this feature to learn more about how you can use it. Um, together with um, prop validation, I also want to introduce you to Viter terminal interface because this amplifies where you can use the prop validation. Viter terminal interface is published as VTI on NPM, so you can run NPX VTI to directly run it. It's a CLI application. You can run NPX VTI diagnostics to get all the type checking errors in your view templates directly on your CLI. This is quite awesome because basically for view, it's only able to check your runtime props, check your props at runtime. Of a TypeScript, although it can type check your whole code base at build time, it doesn't really understand view templates to be able to um, catch the type error you have in your view templates. But for VTI, because VTI is built on top of Viter, it's able to do all the type checking that Viter has done in the IDE on CLI. So it's able to, VTI is able to catch otherwise uncatchable errors by either view or task alone. And I think that's quite awesome. So here is a quick demo. On the left side, you see two arrows. And to the right side, you are running MPX VTI diagnostics. So uh, after you run that, you will see, oh, um, it launches view language server headlessly, um, found four view files, and uh, found two arrows on the file parent.view. And uh, it exited with um, exit code one. So you can plug VTI into your continu continuous integration system and easily catch all the errors Type, um, type errors in your template interpolation that's on uh, your template, in your view template that's otherwise uncatchable. And uh, I think that's quite awesome because it prevents you from making, um, prevents you from making a lot of simple and uh, silly mistakes. And uh, it helps you grow your code base because now you have this CLI tool that can um, safeguard you against those type errors. With those aside, um, this is uh, one last major feature I want to talk about called component data. I want to take a look at component data from two different perspectives. Um, but component data in one short sentence is data powered language features. Um, what I mean by that is basically you can write a JSON file and then you can get a bunch of language features such as auto completion for free. On the one hand, when libraries contain component data and the Viter install them, so for example, here I installed element UI, then Viter will be able to load all the component data and offer you completion of all elements UI's elements and uh, their attributes. Um, so far, we have these libraries um, offering component data. So if you just install them as dependency or scaffold them with their scaffolding tool, it will be able to complete any components that's offered in these libraries. Uh, I think that's quite awesome because basically when you are trying to use these components libraries, you no longer need to always refer to their documentation. You can just start typing your IDE and uh, all the auto completion will work. The other way of looking at component data is that you can just simply write some JSON files in your workspace. And uh, after that, you point to those JSON files in your package.json. And then Viter will be able to complete 
those tags based on your JSON files. It's awesome be not only because you can just simply write a few JSON files to enhance your Vue.js editing experience. The awesome thing is that because the data is open format, you can use any tool to generate data of this format and uh, give them to Vitor so that Vitor can load them and uh, use them. So what component data would mean to you is it makes it easier to use Vue component libraries. Um, now, if you use any popular Vue component libraries and if they ship component data, you can easily get auto completion for all its components. The other uh, implication for component data is that it's possible for other tools to generate component data to enhance your view editing experience. Um, so it's possible for uh, other people to build tools that analyze your view components or even other frameworks based on view. And uh, as long as they can give Peter this data, Peter can um, make sure to always offer up-to-date completion for the components, libraries um, components. One last if I want to talk about component data is that if you combine component data with the prop type checking functionality we talked about a little bit earlier, what if you can specify a type key to all the props? And Vitor can then load that and make sure that the props you're passing to it satisfy the type constraint. So for example, everybody uses view router and uh, there's a component in it called router link. And uh, one of its props is called Q. So Q must be a string. So imagine Vitor is able to understand that and uh, say, hey, if you're giving view ro link, uh, router links to property a number, then you are using it incorrectly. Um, that opens up a lot of possibility because basically it's, a, it's allowing component library authors to write interfaces for their components and uh, they can be assured that there are tools to catch incorrect usages of their components. Um, I think that would be awesome. That's not happening, but that will happen very soon. So all those major features aside, let's talk a little bit about supporting Vue 3. Um, Vue 3 was a great release. Uh, it's a lot of work, but then there was actually very little change needed for Vitor to support Vue 3, mostly because Vue 3 ships with TypeScript typing and the Vitor only need to load that to make sure um, so everything works on there. Uh, we do link Vue 3 templates a little bit differently from uh, how we link Vue 2 um, templates. So for example, in Vue 3, you can have multiple root elements, but in Vue 2, you don't. So we implement the uh, linting logic differently for different versions of Vue. Uh, work in progress, we have, um, Eva has a RFC for making it simpler to use Composition API with script setup and uh, simplifying the var declaration in style block with style vars. So we do plan to support that. Once the RFC stabilizes, we'll have it in a, um, as soon as it finalizes so that you can use it immediately in your editor. So that's a list of all the new features. I hope you like them, but now we have covered through them all. I want to take a step back to look at these features from a higher perspective. So if we talk about the future of Peter, I think here are some directions that Peter can go to. We can build features in the view context, basically for TypeScript, um, features such as rename. Um, renaming JS and TS are easily understood, but what about renaming a view prop or what about renaming a view components? Uh, this currently require a lot of manual changes, but what if we can make them uh, just one command or one key away from you? So this will make refactoring much easier, but this requires us to write custom logic for handling renaming 
Uh, so there are a bunch of these features that we can adapt to view um, by applying those concepts in the view context, but not necessarily copying those features. Um, I think that's one of the directions that Peter can go to. There are examples of other functionalities that we can do differently in the view context than in the JavaScript context. Another thing that we can do is combining different features. We talk a little bit about template type checking and the VTI because VTI can surface all the template type checking errors on your command line. If we implement more template type checking, then we actually can uh, surface them as well on VTI. And uh, I think that combination is awesome because it's able to catch errors that's otherwise uncatchable um, by either view or TypeScript. Another thing, is, as we talked before, what if component data can be linked together with prop type checking so that you can write a component data library while still um, while also providing type constraint for all the um, props so that anyone who is using your library will have to uh, satisfy that interface to be able to use your components correctly. Uh, the last one, so for example, if there's a command for VTI to analyze your whole code base and generate a component data JSON file from your 200 view um, single file components, and uh, then you can publish that to NPM so that anybody who uses your library can enjoy up-to-date all the completion for all your components. Wouldn't that be awesome? So those are some of the directions I think Vitor can go to. Uh, we'll evolve Vitor with view view always um, comes up with new semantics and syntaxes for making it easier for users to write view. And uh, Vitor will keep up with its pace by always involving um, by me and other contributors um, getting involved in the RFC and uh, trying to follow up with the RFC to implement its syntax. Um, so, um, we will evolve with um, views syntax. Um, finally, I think Litter is in a unique position to help grow views ecosystem because VLS, View Language Server, basically powers all LSP compliant editors. And uh, so changes in View Language Server can benefit almost every View developers. Um, and uh, component data describes view component in a declarative format. I tend to think about that as DTS files for TypeScript and uh, definitely typed for TypeScript as well. Um, for TypeScript, if you are now using a new JavaScript library, you can easily install add types slash that library to get IDE features. I want the same to happen for all the view component libraries. When you use a view component library, it should come with component data, and then you should always get up to date completion and other language features. Um, finally, I think VTI covers view templates with type checking is just really awesome because basically view templates, they're kind of like a stranded part of a type checking system because uh, your build system used to only cover the script part uh, with TypeScript, but now it, with BTI, it can cover both your view templates and your script part with a type checking system. So it's much easier for you to scale up your view application now because you can write view templates without worrying about type errors. And uh, I think that's a great um, direction that Vitor can go to. So with those aside, let's talk a little bit about um, why I want to make those changes. When I started using Vue, I found Vue very simple to learn. And uh, I want to make Vue even simpler to learn for others by providing great tools. So um, by having auto completions always working and uh, diagnostic errors always see 
warning you about wrong usage. I think it better lowers the barrier of entry for most of the new view developers. Uh, on the other hand, I try to make view easier to scale by offering a bunch of type checking functionalities, um, both in the IDE and also in the CLI that is possible for you to integrate your type check into Vitor's type checker into your continuous system, continuous integration system, and uh, always get the type checking errors in your IDE for your view templates. I think those changes will make it much easier for you to write large scale view applications because you no longer need to worry about um, using a view component incorrectly. Uh, those changes are awesome, but implementing those changes and uh, uh, making them happen takes time and effort. So in this year, I have started a sponsorship to um, make my work on Viter more sustainable for myself because I have left a corporate job and uh, I don't have a stable source of income. So if you have benefited greatly from Viter, and uh, if you're able to, I would appreciate your support um, to help me um, make Vitor even greater. Um, so finally, here is a sponsor map, I, a sponsor map I made last month. So each time I get a new sponsor, I try to get their locations through GitHub API and uh, mark them on this map. So, um, Dealing with open source isn't fun at all the times, but each time I look at this map, I'm kind of motivated to work more on Vitor because I get support from all of you from all over the world. Um, so yeah, here's a link to sponsor me. Um, thank you for tuning in from all over the world. Thank you. Um, Finally, I want to say a thank you to the organizer, Jason. He has been helping me a lot in prepping for the conference and uh, arranging everything for me. And I want to thank Evan for his continuous support and uh, guidance um, for working on, um, yeah, for helping to make you better together. Thank you.